Gamers. Welcome back. It's another repi of League Unlock. Eric and Mark here with you. And we still got both the CB Low and LPL Finals to wrap up. So we know MSI seeding, but that doesn't mean we have to wait. We can get right into the preview action before we do all the rankings. It's just, it's time to build up the hype for MSI. So decided today to build a all-time MSI all pro roster meaning every event we've had so far we're picking one individual's performance from attorney and putting together the all-time time machine monster roster. MSI is already the best of the best of the spring season going through from everywhere around the world. We're going the best of the best from there, from MSI. We're talking about the all pro list. These are the guys that really made a difference, drove their team to success and wowed everybody at these MSI events. This is the all pro list. of If you weren't including finals, I think top lane, Maybe you'd be throwing a Zeus performance from T1, but despite not winning the event still, I feel like you got to be shouting out BLG bin in 2023. Not RNG bin, that, that was a fair choice to have as well, but BLG bin was stealing the show, absolutely dominating a lot of these matchups, even though they lost to JDG. This is when people were still talking about 369 as that best Weak side top laner. He hadn't fully put on his carry pants yet. So Ben was a treat to watch on the rift and off when he's coming to the camera. Throwing up the three zeros after game one. Oh, come on. How can you not love a guy when he's doing that to the camera? Showing you that type of attitude, that type of confidence, that type of belief in himself and the team that they're going to get it done. And the performances that Ben was putting out. Yeah, pretty darn good reason why you had that level of confidence and that level of attitude towards the camera. Th this guy was a beast all the way through this MSI. You're talking about the Jax performances. You're talking about the Gwen performances. You're talking about the NAR performance against Cloud9 going 6-0 and 11. Dumpstering Mr. Fudge. You go as well. You can go a little bit deeper. You already mentioned Zeus. Well, he's got nightmares about Mr. Bin's Scion up in the top lane. It's not just about the fancy carries. It's not just also you throw in that Fiora that he played at the event as well. You throw that Scion in, that big old meatball, and the way that he plays those tanks, it is a destroyer out there for the side of BLG. I mean, this tournament as a whole was a prime example of multiple pocket picks that this dude you can talk camille fiora Jax when it's slightly off meta there's all these terrifying split push champions that you know in a best of setting bin can always pull out and that is the win con for blg as a squad and uh well it's a pretty terrifying prospect of a win con yes that is a dominant force coming through that top side you roll in Heck, even at this MSI, you had the Kennen coming through from this from him, and then the classic a Renekton. You got to be rounding things out. And he's an performance. actual scary Renekton when it gets on very, the this bit. Very scary Renekton. That is that prehistoric Renekton coming on through the Triassic period, making sure he is that threat in the top side. This was it. Ben really did put the the capital point on this one in this one, and it's crazy that BLG is not the ones coming away with the MSI title at this when you talk about how dominant Bin was able to play at this event. But it fully was the, okay, that spring split wasn't a fluke out of BLG. This is a legit world-class team with Bin leading the way. And obviously the trajectory for Bin and them only went higher the rest of 2023 and carried into 2024. And throughout this one, it was all the way through these games that Ben was finding those advantages early on. I got 65, 66% of the time he had that CS advantage at 15 minutes in Atlas MSI. He was finding ways to generate it for this BLG powerhouse that did, I think, beat out a lot of the expectations a lot of people had for them and what type of power they would show last at the last MSI event. Two other names you could maybe shout out for top laners on here is Lane Swap Zhao Hu 2021 on RNG and obviously 2019 The Shy. If IG doesn't get upset by TL, maybe you're throwing The Shy on this list. Oh, I, I'd love to do that. The fanboy in me would like to put him out there in this type of spot. You're right. 
there is a bit of a problem as far as the Team Liquid roadblock that was for IG in that 2019 MSI. And you go, yep, yeah, you got can't roll with that. And then you roll into Xiaohu in the roll swap. And that is the one where I'm tempted to make that change. I just think the dominance that been provided last year is just too much. You can't unseat him from that position. But what we did see from Xiaohu when he was roll swapped, the type of ADCs, the type of other champions that he loves to bring into that top lane from his other experiences... That was some pretty darn good fire coming out. We're going six years prior to BLG bin in 2023 for the jungle spot on this one. And this is this is the high of the peanut era in SKT. It wasn't just against GAM Esports. Peanut put an absolute lease in master class clinic on throughout this entire MSI event in Brazil. I feel pretty confident saying it will never be eclipsed. That level of, of explosive power and professional showcase on the champion of Lee Sin. I don't think we will ever see a window of opportunity quite like that, what Peanut showcased at this 2017 MSI. Of course, other fantastic games. You can go to the Graves for five of them. You can go to the Ivern. Uh, and the Olaf, each of them for three games and still pretty darn great performances, really good statistics. But it is that Lee Sin that is that runaway here. Six games, 100% win rate. And my man was rocking something like almost a 12, flat out 12 KDA through those six wins. Unthinkable, the role that he was playing on that Lee Sin. And he ended up this tournament with the most kills of the entire event, not just among junglers, among any player at the event. And this is the uh, pre, pre prerequisite of later on in the year when junglers don't really do anything. It's just an 80 carry only meta. So the fact that he was doing this in the 2017 era, even more impressive. Really a flashback to the past, going back to this one, and it it's kind of making me feel super old because I very much remember this MSI and, and starting to cover it as well for the channel and things like that. It's been a long time, and still this stands out to me as the most ex exceptional and dominant and exciting jungle performance that we have ever seen at an MSI. And this is kind of the end of the... SKT MSI era where you see them time in time out dominating at the event at bare minimum making the finals winning them most of the time because 2018 onwards it's very much shifted to many other teams especially the LPL being the ones to steal the show at MSI it's a it's a overall statement around what we see for the world in League of Legends and how things have changed and the response to what was that SKT dynasty, right? Dynasty and how they dominated and controlled these international events. Other teams, other organizations have found ways to rise up to be these top level teams and challenge. So the international scene is a totally different place. But you go back to 2017 and this still was in that era where it felt like there was this unbeatable shield of protection in front of T1. Sure, we had the Flash Wolves, the T1 killers, Sure, we did have, you know, EDG get that upset win at MSI. That's these type of situations. But those still felt like such oddballs that you had with compared to the successes of T1 and dominant performances like Peanut on this at this MSI. This was still riding high of that, uh, that T1 SKT dynasty. Yeah, it felt like an inevitability still up to 2018 that T1 would be coming away with a victory at this international event. Other jugglers you could maybe throw in. 2019 Clid for SKT, especially in the group stage, was an absolute beast and probably the best player at the whole event before that Game 5 uh, throwdown against G2. And another guy, I mean, Wei, had some incredible performances. We're going to be talking about RNG a lot on this list because they've won this event three times. There's a heck of a lot of RNG hanging around in here, and there have been some good performances from them. I don't think quite necessarily enough outside of a pocket pick that we'll talk about here that does break through and claim that all-pro spot. They're going to get a couple of these honorable mention type of situations. And I think, as you said, Clid is the other one that you do really look at. Another player that was able to dominate, dominate for SKT, uh, T1 at the time. And it is unfortunate that you do have to be reminded of that game 5-1 because that is... A mega owie on the on the report card there, and you cannot be holding on to that one when you've got the stellar practically you know 
perfect, you know, unblemished record that is the 2017 MSI of Pima. Yeah, been the only one on this list uh, that hasn't, that didn't win the title through that year. That just proves again how dominant Ben was and what the high standard we have to hold uh, for the rest of these guys. When you go to the mid lane, we've seen Zhao, who's been here, Showmaker, obviously tons of faker events, but it is the evolution from baby faker to Claps. Because what Caps was doing during that 2019 miracle run for G2, where he ended up picking up the MVP uh, for the entire event, or maybe just finals, whatever it was, this guy was lethal from start to finish and was the first time you really were like, this Western player is not only competing, but beating up on these Eastern teams. And it is a big deal to talk about this one in 2019 for Caps and the way that things went down at this event. I'm looking big time. There's a couple of champions that we can talk about. But number one, Silas. This was a mega showing on this Silas, the creativity, the playmaking and execution that Caps was able to bring to the table did make you believe that, no, 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 we're not just watching anyone else. We're watching someone that can compete, can challenge, can respond to the best of the best that the East is gonna throw out in the mid lane. And that is a significant thing to say, as we all know the importance of the mid lane position, especially back in 2019, right? You roll through and what was going through in that mid lane, the power picks and the way that you could control the game. These type of things, the Akali, the Rise, you're throwing some Aurelia into there, even you mix in an Alessandra game here for Caps and he's finding a way to get it done, but it is big time about the Silas performance for me is the one that really showcased the difference level and the growth and maturity that Caps has gone through in his career to rise to the superstar level that he was at in 2019. Almost carrying G2 to some upsets against IG in the group stage. Going toe-to-toe -to -toe against a resurgent faker and SKT in a best of five. And then making North America look like a wild card region in the finals. The full journey that he went through in this tournament was second to none. It was, it was unbelievable. And I think the matches against IG is one of those ones where a lot of people don't view it quite necessarily the same because IG eventually does stumble and falter in their semifinal match with Team Liquid, but it is one of those things where you have to be giving that respect to the power that IG was at, realize what significant it meant for Caps in his individual career to have that type of performance, to have that type of output against an IG where we go the last time it was, I mean, it's getting clapped at Worlds from the rest of IG alongside the rest of Fnatic too. This time, different time around, he has grown up. It ain't baby faker out there on the stage. That's Claps. He's taken names. And he stayed Claps for the years to come as the premier guy coming out of the European scene. Maybe the only other name I'd accept for mid lane is what JDG Knight was doing in 2023 because he absolutely obliterated, obliterated Yigao in those finals matchups. And this was the first international event where we finally got to see the height of what we had come to see domestically out of him. And I think a lot of people are going to be maybe upset or going, well, why isn't there a faker even mentioned here in these type of things? Well, you look back, there aren't really these performances that jump out the same type of ways as some of these guys. It's not to say that he hasn't had impactful moments. Or faker waits for worlds, worlds even more than MSI, you know? It's a different scale when you're talking with Faker and you're rolling through all the things that he has done and where you find it impressive. You go through the MSIs and it just doesn't jump out the same type of way, same type of runs, these type of situations. That's why you can find someone like Caps take advantage of kind of this, you know, uneasiness in the middle lane pool of an MSI and have these type of performances stand out. And especially again, I'm banging on it. That's Silas the that showcases what he's capable of. That is the big difference for me and why he finds himself in this position instead of anyone else. And listen, Faker's had some incredible individual highlights throughout MSI. The Silas stolen Nar ulti, <laughs> some of the jukes he's done, Baron steals on Lissandra, but the full body of work for the year tournament. You got to be giving the nod to Caps and what he did in 2019 to lead G2 to their first international title. Now we're moving into that bot lane and obviously historically been some incredible bot lanes at MSI. A lot of them representing SKT, but no individual tournament ever may be matched by what we were getting out of 2018.
15 Uzi. This was peak performance out of him. It was peak meta where you were just jamming all your resources into 80 carries. My man did almost 40% of his team's damage across the entire MSI event. That number is absolutely ludicrous. That is so bonkers, but it's also one of those easy trivia questions because there's no way there's any other player in history that it could be than your boy Uzi in the bottom lane for RNG, getting those resources, protect Mr. President, make sure it's going on. And of course, of all years, 2018, the golden year that was supposed to be for RNG and how they laid it out. This was the MSI that started all of that road towards the hype that was worlds for this team and this Uzi performance at it a mega reason why because everybody knew that the engine that was going to drive this RNG team was Uzi as your superstar in the bottom lane he had to have the power he had to have the gold he had to be the one making sure that he's popping off and this MSI oh you better believe he was popping off boys you can check the stats on all these champions and it is that's how you know it's a flashback to the past because we got Ezreal games rolling on through here and we got the king of Ezreal and Uzi crushing on this champion you can even throw in uh you know there's a couple of caitlin games some kaisa some zaya in there as well this was a fantastic msi from your boys throw it on kogma too there were countless 80 carries that he was popping off on i've seen both double lift and reckless talk about this tournament in particular they were at the events going up against uzi and saying it just wasn't fair what him and ming were doing in the bot lane uh, in other 2v2s and the biggest example for me from this event is Prey, King Zone at the time, has an incredible individual tournament from start to finish, and we totally forget about it because Uzi was that much better. And it, it, it's oh, almost, it's so crazy to think that this is how it all lined up, the way things played out for RNG at this point, because you're right, the way they went through this tournament, they were blitzing their way through in such a fashion that you almost ignore whatever happened with King Zone X, because again, does end up faltering out it doesn't end up working and it is rng rolling on through this msi as those champions and big time part of it is uzi and the way that he played and it really is nice to have this type of moment have this one of these spotlights in the sun where uzi can claim this title ahead of all these other legends that he gets to be put in to these conversations about the greatest of all time whether it's adc role in particular or if it's everybody else he can hold on to this one with this msi performance back in 2018 the only other name you're maybe sliding in as a substitute spot here is Ruler 2023 because we were already talking about him as the best AD carry in the world. And at MSI, he absolutely delivered. There were countless team fights. JDG had no business winning and you're left scratching your head. How did Ruler do that? I think Ruler is the only thing that I'm holding Ruler back from in this situation is he's getting a little bit of that boost, a little bit of that unfair assistance from 200 years of Riot game design, creeping on through, infesting through in the time that we have been since 2018 until Kaisa now. Kaisa was the 200 years in 2018. We knew so little back then for what was in store for us in this game and what type of champions and what type of limits the ruler could break at the next MSI. Yes, you're right. He rolled on through, continuing that form that we talked about him so many times as possibly the best player in the world, the way that he was rolling in the bottom lane back in 2023. That MSI was a pretty darn great showcasing of exactly that type of firepower that he was bringing. But I'm still sticking with 2018 MSI and Uzi. It feels like a different era, but it absolutely is to me the iconic ADC performance of MSI. Especially because so many of the eggs were in the Uzi basket. JDG was an absolutely stacked roster in 2023. So a couple bonus points for Ruler there. But those are the only two names you could accept on a list like this. When you go to the buddies of the bot lane in terms of support, initially you were thinking maybe just slot 2018 Ming alongside what Uzi was doing because he was propping him up the whole way. But those were mostly enchanters he was playing. But... A three-time MSI champion. You know there's still lots to choose from, from Ming. And we're going to 2022, the year they beat SKT, then T1 in those finals. And it is a four-man recon engage from Ming himself that eventually does it. He also clearly claimed the best Nautilus in the world title throughout this event. Oh, man. That is... 
you're giving me nightmares. Remind me of that Nautilus and what he was able to do out there on the rift. An absolute terror for the enemy squad. Yes, 2022 Ming rolling on through here. Fantastic that we get to have that little bit of a comparison, a little bit of a talk that there is also another entry that could be on this list of the 2018 Ming that was alongside Mr. Uzi and what he was doing back then. But I think this one is that one that eclipses it. Yes, you are playing more so of these engaged champions, getting to showcase that type of aspect of the support position and really making it work on that Nautilus, on the Rakan. You throw Braum into that conversation as well. You want to spice things up? Well, Ming's got you too. He's rolling with the set. He's rolling with the Shen down in the bot lane as well. And might I add, taking up an absolute insanity load of assists on that Shen in the game that he's playing with it. You can even say, okay, that's nice, Ming, but let's really switch it up. Let's test a couple of other skills. What about Senna? Yes, my man's rolling through on the Senna and picking up Before, wins as well. Before, it was well. crazy meta to be playing Senna support uh, back in 22, so. But it doesn't matter. Ming's getting it done, and he's winning it for, uh, for RNG. 2022 MSI, no question about it. I'm rolling with Ming as the support. And you might be saying a couple of appearances, how do you have a support list without Kyria? on there but both kiria and guma probably the least uh or the most underwhelming performances they've had in an event have been msi both times out of them it, it's kind of a, a you know a double-sided coin here in the sense that you flip it once and you're gonna get the international performances that you got at worlds here where the t1 team carries themselves to the finals gets it done makes the lpl look like a kitty cat out there the way that they're destroying them series after series after series but then you have the flip side and you got msi performances and none of them have really run away with it we haven't seen that spicy cooking that we talk about with the bottom lane and the, that's and why they're the so abilities. angry at worlds is because they got smacked around at msi so we're hoping things change this time around for t1 at msi but that is a part reason why you don't find guys were names that you might think of in this type of situation, but you got to dig a little bit deeper into it and you're not going to find them here. We'll see if any new names make this list after 2024, but that is it today for League Unlock. Eric and Mark here with you beautiful people. Thanks for hanging. We will catch you on that flippity flip.